Okay. I think we've given time for everyone to log on. Once again, my name is Matt Dykstrom, the CEO and one of the founding partners of Trade Digital. We are a digital media strategy company based here over in Seattle, Washington. Give you a little bit of information about us. We are a partnership with over 20 years of combined industry experience at Fortune 100 companies working with the top brands worldwide. We've managed budgets for small, medium, and large companies ranging from next to nothing to $20 million. We've built technology plans for $2 billion a year businesses, and we've built strategies for startups. Our passion is digital media strategy. We love to help especially small and medium-sized businesses compete with the big boys. Digital media does not need to be confusing, stressful, or a pain in the neck. And we love to help companies achieve their goals on the digital space. So today, you're probably here for your digital media camp introduction. So, welcome class. When you first heard digital media, were you stressed? A lot of people are. Trust me, you're not alone. When people hear digital media, they, they envision nightmares, and they don't have to. It really is not that complicated when you get down to the basic thumbnails and tags to it. Now, I'm not going to tell you that we can solve everything all at once. If you ever if you ever encounter somebody who tells you they're a digital media expert or someone who can, says they can solve all your problems, personally, I turn around and run. Digital media is changing on a daily, sometimes hourly basis. Whether it's Facebook implementing a new update or a new platform such as Pinterest appearing out of nowhere, things are changing constantly. So there really isn't an expert out there. What you do have, though, is you do have people who have been working in the industry for years and years and years. And here at Trade Digital, we literally were on Facebook before it was even public. So today, and in our boot camp, we hope to get you from feeling like this when you hear digital strategy to something a little closer to this. Now, for our lesson today, we're going to take a brief look at what our digital boot camp actually focuses on, Efe efficient and effective digital media strategy. We're going to cover in five steps. Step number one, regardless of whether you're a brick or mortar or if you're a completely online company, excuse me, you need to find your voice. You need to know what is your company about. Even if you weren't going to implement a digital strategy, in order to attract the customers to your business, you need to know what does your company stand for? Why do they want your products? Why should they go to you as opposed to your competitor? If you can't answer those questions, you don't even want to touch a keyboard right now. You want to stop and you want to figure this out. This is extremely important both in traditional marketing, but especially in digital media marketing. Today's consumer is called the connected consumer. More and more, they are going across the web and finding out information, sometimes when they're literally in your shop. If they don't feel an attachment to you, if they don't feel that you are more than just some name on a wall, they're probably not going to stay your customer. They want real people. They want real businesses. And so you need to know what is your story and why they should, they should work with you. Why should they come and be your customer? If you can convey that message, you're going to find your customer, and your customer is going to want to stay in that relationship with you and be a long-term customer. Additionally, when you're finding your voice, it's going to help you determine what name your company is. Now, some of you may already have company names, and that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. That's great. I'm not going to tell you you need to change your names right now. But if you haven't determined the name of your company yet, this is a good time to use that kind of information, to use that understanding of what your company stands for, to help develop a name that when people see it and say it, they know immediately, this is a company for me. Step number two, 
you need to claim your digital turf. Now, by this, I, I don't mean right now I want you to all run out there and get on to Facebook and start posting and get on to Twitter and start tweeting and get on Google Plus. And no, that's not what I mean. What I do mean is just like when people first started putting their businesses online, you needed to get on there quick and get that, that URL, that address on the World Wide Web that said your name. You need to do that also in the, in the rest of the digital media world out there. So if your company is named after your favorite dog, guess what? You're going to want to make sure that your Twitter handle is named after your favorite dog. You're going to want to make sure that when you go into Facebook, you get your 30 friends to like you as quickly as possible and get your what we call vanity URL to reflect the name of your favorite dog. And Google+, Plus, which just recently announced that it is starting to let people get vanity URLs, when they contact you, you want to be ready so you can claim that vanity URL. Give you a little story here. The reason why this is so important is because if you don't do it, it can disappear quickly. Prior to starting Trade Digital, I started my own blog. The blog's URL was chatwithmat.com. You may have visited that blog recently. You may have not. Um, we also have a Twitter feed, which is chatwmat. The reason for the difference is because I delayed between setting up my blog and setting up my Twitter feed, and I lost that Twitter handle. Don't let that happen to you. In my case, it's the difference between a chat w and a chat with Matt. It's not that confusing for most people, but it's a little bit Loop causes your customer to go a little further than they really need to do to try to figure out which is which. So make sure you claim that turf as quickly as possible. Step number three, determining your strategy. With the exception of possibly step number one, this is probably one of your most important steps of the five steps. Now, anyone can take three cans of paint with different colors, throw them against the wall, and say it's a masterpiece. But the reality is, when you do that, do you often come out with the Mona Lisa? I'm guessing not. And if someone does, please videotape it and send it to me. I'd like to see it. But uh, the reality is, is that if you're just throwing things out there, you're not going to achieve your goals. You need to figure out where your customer is, who your customer is, how you want to reach them. Is your audience local or are you aiming at worldwide? Do you want to present yourself as an educator or an entertainer? How often do you want to publish and where do you want to publish? Very important. A lot of people when they first start out, they'll go ahead and get on as many platforms as they can. And eventually what they find out is two things. One, if they're on 12 different platforms, it's really hard to keep original content on each one. So they start Xeroxing them. They start photocopying them. And the audiences get very tired of that very quickly. And you actually end up forming a negative opinion where you could have had a positive opinion, even if the material you're putting out there is good material. The second thing, well, I guess I actually already covered the second thing. <laughs> so you make sure that you know where you want to put that out there. It's very crucial for your strategy. It may be only two or three different networks. It may be only one network. You need to build that into your strategy. You want to know why you're publishing it to where you're publishing it. Is it because that's where your existing customer base is, or is that because it's where the customer base you haven't hit yet is? And you need to determine who in your business is going to engage with the customer. Is it yourself, the business owner? Is it your salesperson? Or is it another employee? Or is it all of the above? You need to figure out who it is because your customer expects a consistent message being delivered. Now, that consistent message may include, say, several different personalities. But they need to know that when they come back to it, that consistent message is out there and who those personalities are. You can't change it every five seconds and never return. Strategy is something that we take very, very serious, and I, I hope 
that everyone listening does as well because this is going to be crucial for you not only to attract those customers but to hold on to them and build relationships. So make sure you pay attention to your digital strategy. Step number four. Okay, so you know who you are. You grab your digital turf. You've decided in your strategy which parts of that digital turf you're actually going to be broadcasting on. Now your customer is, is talking back. They're giving you comments. They're sending you feedback. Are you listening to it? It's very important to make sure you're listening. Back in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, companies would pay other companies to take their clientele and conduct surveys with them. The idea being is that if you could do a survey, you can get feedback, you would know what does your customer like, what do they not like so much, what's important to them, where are you doing a good job, where can you improve. Those surveys were expensive, and for a small business, it would be a major investment for your marketing budget. Nowadays, you don't have to do that. You can, but you don't have to do that because your customer is already talking about you. If your business is over two weeks old, I guarantee, even if you don't have a, a digital presence, somebody somewhere has made at least one comment about your business, your product, or your service. And if you've gone to the trouble of setting up your digital platforms, they now have a place to talk to you, about, to tell you about what they think. So you need to listen to that. Take it to heart. Make changes where changes are needed. But listening and making changes aren't everything. You need to go one step further. You need to respond. In a recent survey, 60% of Americans stated that they not only wanted companies to respond back to them, but they actually expected. They're demanding that companies respond back to them. However, only 40% of companies actually do that. And those companies that do, they do it on varying levels. Now, if you're a company that is listening to your customer already, you're a step ahead of, of your competitor. If you're a company that's listening, taking action, and responding, imagine how much further ahead you are by being part of that 40%. Step number five. Measuring your ROI, your return on investment. Over 50% of brands engaged in social media today do not know how to measure the effectiveness of their campaigns. Do you? Which side of the 50% are you? You can be on the side that does very easily. This goes back to strategy. If you know what you're doing and why you're doing it, then you, know, you can find a way to measure it. If you are broadcasting on Twitter and your goal for broadcasting on Twitter is to tell people to come and visit your blog, you can measure how many people are actually going from Twitter to visit your blog. If you're writing a blog and your goal for your blog is to entice people to then visit the rest of your site and then convert into a customer and make a purchase, you can measure that as well. There are probably hundreds of tools out there to do that. Some cost money, some don't. But if you know why you're doing something, what your goal is, then you can measure it. You can measure its effectiveness. And in many cases, you can measure it with something as simple as, say, Google Analytics, which costs you nothing. Now, if you're a bigger business, you may want to look at something like a Radian 5 or something a little more expensive. But for most of us, you can use something as simple as Google Analytics and either learning it on your own or with a little bit of help, you can go ahead and start measuring and determining the effectiveness of your strategy. So jump right back to strategy again. Make sure you know why you're doing what you're doing. So, that's our brief lesson today, our brief overview. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about our boot camp. Our boot camp is structured into twice a month meetings, about an hour long each. 
They include about a half hour of training and then another half hour to consist of members only group discussions and taking companies that are participating in the boot camp and looking at real life situations for them and applying those learnings to their situation. Additionally, every member receives on a quarterly basis a minimum of 15 minutes of one-on-one -on -one time. All they have to do is ask for it and we'll work with you one-on-one -on -one and have our experts help you out with whatever problem you're facing. And then of course, if you need further help or you want a digital evaluation or you want to put together an actual digital media strategy, we'll be happy to work with you on that and, and give you a discount for it as well. What do we cover? Well, our boot camp is set up to help you succeed. We are looking at information that's going to help you reach your customer, going from setting up your strategy to using the tools to implement it. We cover Pinterest, we cover Google+, we cover Facebook, we cover the strategies and the processes you need to, to reach your customer, determine where your customer is at, and the techniques to make you be able to deliver that content to reach your customer without having to be on the web 24 by 7. We show you how to automate without sounding like a robot, and the best features in the various digital platforms out there so you can make sure that your branding reaches exactly where it needs to go to. If you want more information about what is what's covered in our syllabus, I hope you'll visit tradedigital.com slash bootcamp. About halfway down the page, you'll see a link for our, our list of what exactly is covered within our bootcamp. So my question for you is, are you ready? I hope you, hope you join us and get ready. And visit us at tradedigital.com slash bootcamp. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the questions that have come in and see if we can deliver some answers. Take just a moment here to switch to our live screen. Make sure I don't Okay, there we go. So, let's see what, what came in while we were talking. Okay, first question, Annie. She's asked, how often should I tweet? Well, a lot of this is going to be determined based upon your strategy. But no matter what your audience is, where you're aiming it, remember quality over quantity. Tweeting every five seconds is probably overdoing it. For one, you're going to lose that quality. For two, people can get bored. So despite what the early experts mentioned, have one or two good tweets a day. And in most cases, the quality of that material is going to attract your audience far more than if you're out there every five seconds. You also hold on to much longer. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Tom. Last training I signed up for was almost $400. How much is your boot camp? <laughs> Thank you for asking that question, Tom. So our boot camp is $55 a month. And once again, it happens twice a month for an hour each. And of course, you do receive the quarterly one-on-one -on -one, um, Q&A and uh, strategy help. Jessica, can I repeat the stats about how many businesses respond to comments? Great, great. So 60% of Americans expect that the companies will respond to their comments. Only 40% of companies actually do that. If you can be part of that 40%, it's really going to help you. Uh, let's see here. Daniel, do I have to be on Facebook 24-7? I know I should post often, but I need time to run my own business. <laughs> That's very true. One of the biggest complaints we hear from people who, are, who have started out on digital media is they're not sure how often should they be on there, and they feel like they're chained to their computer. You don't have to, and that's actually something we cover in our boot camp. 
To run an efficient campaign, you do need to have a presence out there, but it doesn't need to dominate your life. You can schedule 90% of it within the first half hour to an hour of your work week. And then throughout the rest of the work week, just occasionally, time block some time, five minutes here, 10 minutes there maximum. Don't spend hours and hours and hours, but give that presence to your audience without ignoring your business. Uh, let's see. Okay, we have Diane. Uh, Dan, let's see what we have here. Asking about engagement strategy for Photopad, which is a photo app for Facebook. So, for Photopad, you're going to want to start looking at what your voice is. Figure out what your audience wants to hear, what's going to entice them. And then make sure whatever you're putting out there reflects that. Make sure that it's something that is going to make your audience interested and want to come back for more and more and more. It actually relates pretty much to anything you're putting out there, whether you're looking at putting on something on Pinterest, looking at putting something out on Twitter, or even on your website. You want to make sure whatever you're putting together is something that Get your audience to want to be engaged. And get your audience to want to come back over and over and over again. I hope that answers your question. If not, feel free to drop us another line. I'll be able to go a little more depth on that one. And let's see what else we have here. We have a question here from Nick. He's on our Google Plus feed. Where can I sign up? Okay. So whether you're joining us through Google Plus on the YouTube channel, or another, asset, another uh, avenue. If you do not see the sign up button just below the uh, video feed, all you have to do is just go to tradedigital.com slash bootcamp. And right there, you'll, you'll be able to watch a rebroadcast of this feed, as well as click on the sign up button and get a little more information. Let's see, do we have time for another question? Uh, this is a good one here. Should I go on Facebook or should I go on Google Plus? Well, a lot of that's going to be determined by your digital strategy. Who is the audience you're looking for? If you are looking for, how should I put this politely? If you're looking for an audience of Google enthusiasts, obviously Google Plus is going to be your, your top choice. But to be honest, even there, you're probably going to want to take a look and see if part of your audience is segmented out to Facebook or Twitter or some other channel. To answer this question, what you really need to do is know why your customer wants to come to you, what you want them to hear, and where they're located at. Once you know that, you know where to go to. I'd recommend sitting down and developing a digital strategy aimed at that clientele and if that strategy says then that most of your audience is on Google+, Plus, go for it. If it says most of them are on Facebook, you should go to Facebook. But keep an eye on both. As time goes by, you're going to tweak that strategy. Just because today your audience is on one doesn't mean they may not go to the other. All right. Well, it looks like we're about out of time now. So once again, I want to thank everyone for joining us here. It's been a pleasure talking with you. And I hope that you gained something out of this presentation. We look forward to hearing you at tradedigital.com, and I hope you will sign up for our boot camp. I think it's going to be fun. Take care.